human behavior. It's a subject matter that's astonishing in its complexity. So one can imagine that finding ways to communicate rules and boundaries to maintain order can be a difficult task, especially considering how easily they're ignored. Such concerns make up the emerging field of behavioral economics. And to better understand how organizations and government agencies are using this growing area of research, we turn to New Mexico, which took an in-depth look at the state's unemployment insurance program. Across the United States in 2014, over $4 billion in benefits was paid out to individuals who didn't actually qualify for them. That means that one in every $8 was improperly distributed. So what was causing such a high number of improper payments? Combining insights from the data and behavioral science, the Department of Workforce Solutions, or DWS, was able to identify the three main areas in the application process where inaccurate information was most frequently reported. Meet Eric. Eric was fired from his job as a line cook for being late for the second time in one week. Management didn't seem to really care why he was late, even though Eric thought he could supply perfectly legitimate reasons. And this is Karen. Karen was laid off from her job three months ago due to staff cutbacks. Fortunately, she was able to start collecting unemployment benefits while she looked for a new job. After a while, she decided to settle on a temporary job at 20 hours a week until a full-time position opened up. Karen is well aware that if she reports any income at this time, her benefits will take a drastic fall, putting her in a pretty tight spot. George here lost his job when the local paper downsized, freeing him up to focus on that novel he's always wanted to write. Sure, he meets the requirements for job searching, just the other day, he saw a posting for a promising new opportunity. Looking at these examples, we begin to understand the nature of the problem confronting state and federal agencies. Traditionally, the solution has been to amp up resources to prosecute low-level cases of fraud, which is not only expensive, but risks withholding benefits from those who need them most. So the DWS turned to behavioral economics to see what the latest science could offer. Nudge theory argues that positive reinforcement and indirect suggestion can be more effective than direct instruction, legislation, and enforcement. By simply making a few smart, subtle changes to the claimant's experience, the DWS could drastically improve the three key areas that led our friends astray. Displaying a copy of a preloaded letter addressed to Eric's ex-employer, verifying whether he was fired or laid off, provided just enough accountability to nudge him toward the more honest answer. Notifying Karen that 9 out of 10 people report all new income was enough to encourage her to report that check that's on its way. And by asking George to commit to a specific job search goal next week, we see an increase of follow-through, which leads to an increase in his chances of finding a new job. Using these three simple nudges, the New Mexico DWS was able to deliver solutions that made claimants twice as likely to report new earnings, half as likely to commit fraud, and up to 20% more likely to find work within the next few months. So if a state agency can use behavioral economics to significantly reduce improper payments of fraud, just imagine how it could be used to benefit your organization's bottom line.